the fallen state is amazing. Subscribe now. Controversy over the all-white Oscar nominations shows no sign of letting up. Fox News Channel's Stacey Dash, best known for her role in Clueless, stepped into the debate, slamming Jada Pinkett Smith and director Spike Lee for supporting the boycott. I think it's ludicrous. Why? Because we have to make up our minds. Either we want to have segregation or integration. And if we don't want segregation, then we need to get rid of channels like BET and the BET Awards. So you say there shouldn't be a BET channel? No, I don't think so. BET Vice President fired back. I loved you in Clueless. I had no idea you actually were. Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. I am absolutely amazed that my guest is here. I remember watching her movie, Clueless, and watching the movie, I never thought one day that she and I would be sitting on stage together and I would be interviewing her. Stacy Dash is here. She's an actress and author of There Goes My Social Life from Clueless to Conservative. Do you agree with me that life is like amazing that if you let go and just let it happen, it tends to just unfold by itself? Yes. Isn't it like weird or amazing or it's something? Am it's amazing, but it takes some time for you to realize that yeah, that's yeah. what you have to do. That's right. You were called Dion, right? Yes. On uh, Clueless. Clueless. Um, how was that for you? You became very famous after that, too. Yes. And how was it doing Clueless? What um, was that like for you? It was the best experience. I have to say it was the best film experience yeah. I've had. The writing was there. The direction was there. The chemistry with the cast was there. Yeah. It was what you see on camera is how it was on set. My show is called The Fallen State. Mm -hmm. Do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? Absolutely. And what is the proof? What's the evidence? Why do you believe that? Look at the state of our country. The division, what we count as important. And how would one know when they are in a fallen state? <laughs> <laughs> well, therein lies the rub, right? Yeah. Sometimes it takes for you to not, you don't know you're in a fallen state until you've hit the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. Until you're completely broken. It's amazing, too, that you can be in that state and not know it. Yeah. You know, I was in there at one time, and I didn't know I was in there mm -hmm. until God allowed me to see. Yeah. And once he allowed me to see, I'm like, wow, I had no idea I was living oh. in darkness like that. Yeah, ni neither did I. And over the past 21 months, it has been the dark night of my soul. And I had to fall really yeah. hard. And I'm grateful because I would not know God the way I know him yeah, now. That's right. Absolutely. I would not know. And to hear someone say I had to fall like that, and then you say I'm grateful, mm -hmm. that's amazing because a lot of people don't know how to appreciate and overcome the fall. Mm -hmm. They don't see it as a wake-up call. Right. You're so honest about your life, your personal life in your book. Yeah. What made you decide to be so honest about it, and are you concerned that people will judge you? Never concerned about being judged. Um, I hope that it would inspire others who come from where I come from, you know, and explain who I am, because yeah. people always assume that I am Dion. I was born <laughs> and raised in Beverly Hills, which is far from the truth. Yeah. So I hoped it would inspire, you know, and maybe people would wake up. You uh, discuss your upbringing, and so I'm thinking, it's amazing that you are able to overcome that. Have you overcome all of that? All of it? Uh -huh. It's an ongoing process. Yeah. There are moments yeah. where I feel those demons coming back, you know, yeah. and I have to ask God to help me, you know, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I can recognize them more now. Before, you I didn't know. That's right. <laughs> you know. I was blind and couldn't see. I was now blind and could see, not see. It's easier to deal That's with. That's right. It was a very traumatic, you had a very traumatic childhood. Yes. Your father is black or your mother? My mother, my father. Your father's black, yes. mother white. My mo no. My mother's Mexican. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you are Mexican? Yes. So what is it like living between those two worlds? 
Because it looked like your father would be white and you black. Right. He is actually, um, his parents were from Barbados. So he's first gen generation American. It was a tightrope, but you know, I did it. I had to prove a lot of things, you know, growing up where I did. I had to be tough and a survivor. It shows that you can overcome anything. That's right. All things are possible. All things are possible with God. You grew up in, in a very rough neighborhood in South Bronx. Yes. That's hard enough itself. Yeah. To, to that. Tell us a little bit about that. What was that like for you growing up in the Bronx? It was difficult. You know, both of my parents had drug problems. Yeah. Um, they were addicted to drugs. and But I didn't know anything else. So I did every day the best that I could as a child. Yeah. You know, we lived in a five-story walk-up. Had to walk up five flights of stairs every day, you know. Good um, exercise. Yeah, <laughs> played on you know played outside in the front of the in the front on the block, right. stick ball and in the fire hydrant and you know it was fun. There was also good things about it. Yeah. And I learned values and I learned how to hustle and I learned loyalty and integrity. It's interesting that when you're a child growing up like that mm -hmm. and that's all you know. You don't really see it the way a person like who is not growing up in that would see that because that's all you know. It just seems like right. normal, right? Right. Yeah. It seemed normal. You Amazing. Know, and so I read that you uh, you saw your first dead body yeah. while walking to preschool. Yeah. Uh, by yourself at three years old. I, I wasn't. No, I wasn't alone. I was with the babysitter. Okay. Um, and we were walking, and I looked over, and there was a kid under a car. He had a little afro, and I'll never forget it. His eyes were open, and I just remember looking in his eyes and realizing that he was gone. Did it seem weird? It didn't seem weird. It was a very profound moment. There was a peace, and from that moment, I never feared death. Really? Yeah. So you're not afraid of death today? You're not no. afraid of dying? No, I'm not. Interesting. Maybe that's why that happened for you then. Yeah. Children are not afraid of things like that, all right? No. Yeah. yeah. No. So both of your parents were addicted. Yes. And um, what's that? I mean, did you know that, like, wow, my parents are on drugs and no, now I have a deal? No, I didn't realize it. I didn't know it until um, I said it in my book. Until I was around 12, I found, you know, my father's kit. And uh, I, I threw it in the woods because I had previously walked in the bathroom on him shooting up wow. um, with my uncle. And something in my mind thought, okay, this isn't right. And uh, I threw the kit in the woods <laughs> behind my grandmother's house. And that was the first time my father ever hit me oh. because he needed it. Yeah. And so I ran to the woods and I, in the at night and went through the woods and found it and got it for him. Really? But that's, you know, now, as I've become a woman and I've learned about this sickness of addiction, yeah. it is an illness. Yeah. It's a disease. What was it like when he hit you for the first time? It was staggering, but I knew it wasn't him. Right. I could tell it wasn't him. You know, there was did, something else possessing him. Did he ever apologize for that? Of course, yeah. yes. My Are father your was- still living? My mother just passed in November. Really? I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, before she uh, expired, did you guys make up for all that yes. stuff? Yes. Yeah, you forgave her? Yes. And did you tell her that? Yes. What was that like? It was amazing. I'm so grateful because before that, we didn't have a relationship. Yeah. And I got to have my mommy back for three days before she passed. One of the things through my nonprofit organization, I encourage men and women to go to their parents and forgive them mm -hmm. because a lot of parents can't help themselves yeah. and a lot of times they don't realize what they're doing to their children but if you hold on to that anger yeah. you become like the person that you're angry at, you That's take right. on their identity and you repeat that life cycle mm -hmm. doing the same thing to yourself and to your children. That's right. How about your father, did you forgive him as well? He OD'd and died the day before my son was born. So um, I did get to speak to him and I hadn't spoken to him for years. Right. And uh, he called 
and I got to say I love you. And he said he loved me. But for some reason, I never had any anger for him, or I didn't think I did, yes. until later in life, until about 21 months ago. I realized, oh, I am angry with him. Right. Because he chose drugs over me. But in reality, that's not the truth. No, he was he sick. Did. Yeah, he didn't just. He had an addiction. Right. Yeah. So I forgive him. And so, how are you doing now? How are you, how, how are you within I yourself? Am, and I'm better than I've ever been because I've come to know the Lord and I've, allowed, I've surrendered. Right. <laughs> I have finally surrendered. And you're free? And I'm free. And what does freedom look like? Freedom looks like power and joy and peace, no anger. Now that's not easy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I have to watch all the time and pray to God to help me all the time because I'm human. I, um, I had to forgive my mother because she hated my father mm -hmm. and so she tried to turn me away from him. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing that can happen to boys and girls, men and women, is to be turned away from their fathers yes. because it leaves a void, an emptiness deep down in your soul. It leaves an emptiness there and nothing else can fulfill that except a return to the Father. Right. And so God allowed me to see that 29 years ago. I had all this conflict, fear, and doubt, and worry. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life, and it was just awful. And he, so I asked him to let me see myself, and he allowed me to see that I had this dark spirit in me that came from mm -hmm. anger, which is the nature of Satan. Yes. And that uh, if I forgave, then he would forgive me. So I went and forgave my mother, and for the first time, she told me about her life, and exactly what she had done to me was done to her. Mm -hmm. And she apologized, she didn't mean to do it. Then I went to my father and, and asked him what happened with him, and he told me. And my father and I became one, and he gave me, God gave me perfect peace. And 27 years have gone by. I've gone through so much hell, especially being a conservative black person. Yeah. So you know I, I don't mean. know anything about that. <laughs> No. Uncle Tom, sell out, cool, have yeah, guns right? going on me. Yeah. But I still have that perfect peace. Mm -hmm. Nothing can interfere with that. So I understand what you mean by that freedom. Yes. It's such a nice way to live. Yeah. I also read that you had to go live with a, a family who did not protect you and that you were sexually abused. Yes. Tell us about that. I was four. You were four years old. Mm. How old was the, the guy that was doing this? He was thing? a teenager. Wow. 17. Yeah. And w when that started to happen to you, what went through your mind at four years old? Did you understand what was no, happening? No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't understand. Um, right. I just knew it didn't feel right. Yeah. You know, and you feel shameful and, uh, you know, there was and, no understanding of it. But as you grow up, you know, it's, it's, there's a shame. Yeah. And that's the thing I've had to realize that I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, you thought that it was, you had something to do with it? Yeah, really? you do when you Even when that as happens. an adult, knowing that you were four years old, you thought you had something to do it's, with that? It do, it's not reasonable. Right, I understand. Right? Yeah. It comes from, it, it's, it's something that it, unless you look at it, you don't even know it's there. Right. Propelling you and making you make choices that you would have never made had you looked at it and dealt with it. Yeah. And that's why I'm so grateful because I've been looking at myself inside. That's right. And dealing with me. That's right. And to know thyself is to, I right. mean, to overcome this stuff is to know thyself. And realizing that yourself. all these things that have happened to me in the past right. have been making me make the choices of my life. That's right. You know, I would think, and I know a lot of people don't do it, but at four years old, why do you tell this boy's mother? You know, like, you know, your son did something nasty I didn't to me. tell. And what, were you afraid to? Yeah, I mean, I didn't tell, but it was apparent. So, um, you know, it was apparent and they just hit it. Oh, so the, his, his, his uh, mother knew about it? Mm -hmm. Father and mother? Mm -hmm. And they knew about it, but didn't say anything or do mm -hmm. anything? No. How did you find that out? Well, I, I, could, I knew, they, made, they let me know and basically told me don't say anything. Wow. And I couldn't because my parents were very young yeah. And, you know, doing drugs and trying to survive, and they couldn't keep me at the time. I didn't even speak English at that time. I spoke Spanish was my first language. They were Cuban. Mm. Yeah. 
So I would go home and talk to my mother because my, my grandparents didn't speak, teach my mother Spanish. Mm. I would speak Spanish and she couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't understand me. That's, that's what she gets, right? <laughs> wow. And so you just dealt with that. Just Did it uh, awaken like a darkness in you yes. where now you yearn for sex and men and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. When I was younger, yeah. absolutely. I made a lot of bad choices yeah. because of that. And, but now I know. Of course. Now I know. So have you forgiven yourself for that too? Yes. Thinking it was you and judging yourself? Yes. Yeah. And that is the hardest thing to do. Forgiving yourself is the hardest thing to do. And, and why? I don't know. I wish I had an answer for that. Yeah. Um, but the only way to forgive yourself is to know Jesus and to know God and His forgiveness and His love. Yeah. And if he can forgive, who are you not to forgive yourself? That's right. Or forgive anyone else? He doesn't hold, that's right. He doesn't hold anything against you. Right. Once you realize that you're wrong, well, if you do something wrong, you're wrong. Right. And that very moment is over with. That's right. But the problem is Satan will try to remind you of it and make you think. He's that a liar and a thief. Serious. Yes. And that's why I tell people all the time not to believe the voice in your head. Mm -mm because that is the voice of Satan, mm -hmm. and he's constantly reminding you of the past that doesn't exist, That's right. or a false future, but if you follow the revela revelation of God, you're gonna be in his presence, mm -hmm. and you can be free. Right. Because he never judges you. Right, if you stay in the past, you just live in the guilt of the past, and you have no hope for the future. Yeah, that's right. That's amazing. And so you go, uh, so you're, you're a Christian, right? Yes. And you go to church and stuff? I don't go to church that much, oh, good. but I read the Word. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to go to church that No. Much. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was raised Catholic, oh, okay. so I do go to church sometimes and just sit when there is no Mass and pray. Mm. I love it because it's so beautiful. Yeah. But no, I read the Bible. That's my church. You, um, you've been married a couple of times? Three. Three times? And divorced. Wow. Yeah. You're trying to catch up with Elizabeth Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> and so why three times? Uh, why three? That's yeah. just how it happens. <laughs> Fourth it, one's going to be a charm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so did you think you were in love with those guys? Of course. And, and what made you realize you were not? Because... Why the divorce? Uh, well, I loved them. I did. I loved them all the way that I could. Right as much as I was capable of. Right. But, you know, I did the things in the wrong order. I slept with them. Yeah. They said, marry me. I said, yes. And then five years later, I was like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Where did I get here? I know. You know? Yeah. Um, but I look at it as, you know, I have two beautiful children. So these are my blessings and oh. my lessons. You know, I've yeah. learned a lot. So it was the same with all three guys? What? You realize... How did I get in this situation? I don't love you after all. No, it was, it was well, the last one, we won't even, that one, that was not even. Uh, but, you know, my first and my second, uh, yeah. And also I could have, I could have, if I would have known myself better then right, and loved course. myself, yep. I probably could have worked one of those two marriages out. Oh, I see. But I didn't know myself and I didn't know what love was. I had no example of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I didn't know. I was selfish. Of course. You know, very selfish. It's so amazing the things that we do in that fallen state. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we can't see what we're doing. No. But the weird thing is we don't know that we can't see what we're doing. So, you know, I'm thinking, how, do, how does a person come to know that they can't see what they're doing? Because if you never realize you can't see, you can never overcome that. Well, I believe God first. Yeah. That's who allowed me to see it. God. Yeah. He, you know, he gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. Yeah. Um, and then listening. You have to listen. And you have to not be offended. That's right. The offended are the deceived. That's right. You're 100% right. I used to be, I used to be a very emotional male. Mm -hmm. I was a beta male. <laughs> and I took things so personally, it would like hurt my feelings. Yeah. And, and I used to date a lot, and whenever I got ready to break up with the woman, I had to have another one waiting in the of West Wing. Of course, Wayne right. Because, <laughs> you couldn't be alone. Right, couldn't no. be alone. Isn't that no. crazy? Yeah. That is so insane. I know. This That's is the first time I've been alone for this amount of time. I've been alone for two years. 
Yes. By choice, because I want to get to know me. That's right. I love being alone. I'm okay around people too or having someone, but I'm as happy being alone as I am being with others. I want a husband. You do? Yes. All right. You want a husband? I want a man of God. A man of God. <laughs> a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you want a husband? Because that's the way God made it. Yeah. He didn't, he doesn't want us to be alone. Do you want more kids too? No. Oh. No. Well, you don't need a husband. I want a husband. Jesus loves you. I love Jesus too. But, but Jesus wants me to have a husband. Well, he's just going to give you another headache. No, he's not. It's going to be from God? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is a man? What is a man? Uh, besides the body part, of course. Right. What is a man? He's strong, courageous, truthful, loyal, loving. And that's what you're looking for? Yes. You're going to take Jesus to give it to you. That's right. And I have faith in Jesus. If God is for me, who can be against me? <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you ever see men like that? Do you ever run across men yes. and say, wow. That's a yes. strong, faithful, good yes. man. Thank you, Father. He has shown me men in marriages that are everything I want oh, cool. to their wives. Yeah. Does it matter what uh, race they are? No. You marry any race as long as you're good? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. I don't look at the color of anyone's skin. That's The color of my skin is not my identity. It's the content of my character. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one other thing about your mother, I think. I read that your mother used to tell you that you were not good enough. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, and how does a mother say that to the child? I don't know, but you know, I don't know what her demons were, but she had a lot of them, and I'm just grateful that I got to make peace with her, and on her deathbed, I got her to accept Jesus Christ in her heart as her Lord and Savior. Oh, you did? Yes. Amazing. And I got her to come to a place of forgiveness, and she apologize to me and I know that now those demons are gone yeah. and she's in heaven with the Lord and she finally has freedom and joy and peace and love. And so tell me how she would say that and I mean what age were you when she said those things that you're not good enough? All the time just you know. Just was, out of nowhere? Yeah if she were upset with my father or you know angry about circumstances. And what does she mean, good enough? I don't know what that means. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. And I also didn't let it stop me. Right on. I had an uncle who told me that I could do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. And I am so grateful for that man. And so how were you able to, and, and I'm getting the impression right now that you just started waking up recently, the last couple of years, I guess, or yes. so. Yes. So at that time, you were not awake. You didn't understand the things that were happening. How were you able to go from that to Hollywood. Survival. I was a hustler and I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be an actress from the time I was eight in third grade. Really? Yeah. So you knew that for a long time. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello everybody. Troll your liberal family members by getting them our brand new Fallen State t-shirts. On the front it says the Fallen State. On the back it says that's amazing. And don't forget our coffee mugs. The front the Fall Estate, the back, did you have fun? And don't forget my book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. You can out of here. You can go to the Fall Estate TV and order now. So in a, in a few words or less, tell me how, how does one go from being raised and treated that way to becoming very famous in Hollywood? What were the steps that you took to get there? Diligence. You know, I just, I figured out what it was that I wanted, and God just laid it out for me. And that's how I know it was God. Right. You know, and I might, I didn't know it then. You know, all I knew was I was going to get what I wanted, and nobody was going to stop me. And you came out here and just started meeting people, getting involved? My first job was in New York. Oh, really? My first job was on The Cosby Show. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what was that like? It was amazing. How did you get that? How did you get that? I auditioned. Oh, you, you heard about it, auditioned? Mm, yeah. And they're like, yeah. No, we I had an agent. 
you know, right, I got course. an agent yeah. when I was 18, and I auditioned, and I got it. That is something else. Yeah. And what was it like working with Bill Cosby and It was and that wonderful. Crew? How do you see him today with all these accusations about him? Breaks my heart. Yeah. You know, he's, in, he's an old man now, and uh, breaks my heart. He never did anything like that to me, right. so I'm not discounting anyone's right. allegations. Uh, but that never happened with me. Maybe I wasn't his type, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, it breaks my heart to see him go through that too. Yeah. Because I used to love his shows, he was funny, he seemed like a nice man. I remember when Oprah and all those people would really brag about him. Yeah. They would talk about how he would influence them. I remember one, once Oprah said that Bill Cosby told her never to allow, never allow anyone else to sign your checks. Yes. Like when you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like a great inspiration. And then he started speaking out against single parents how they were spoiling their children mm -hmm. and they need to raise them properly. And from there, the attack started. Yeah. And it just seemed to have gone downhill for him. <sighs> it's really a sad thing to see him, you know, in his old age when he should be relaxing and right. just enjoying his life, that he would be destroyed in that manner. Just have to pray for him. Yeah. And yeah. then I think about his wife who stood by him. Oh, so having beautiful. To deal with that. Such a beautiful woman. I really respect her for yes. standing by him because no one knows him the way she does. That's right. And so it has to be something that she thinks is okay. That's right. For her to stay there like that. That's right. I wanted to ask, what is a woman? Hmm. Strong. And when you say strong, define, define strength for me. Being able to get up when you're knocked down. Being able to keep walking when everything tells you don't. When everything in front of you, the circumstances are saying there's no way, you keep going. Being able to make a choice like I did when I was 22 to keep my son and not abort him, even though I didn't have any money and I was with an, in a relationship with a man who used to beat me, I kept my son. How old is he now? 27. 27? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And what is his life now? What is it like? He's for him? wonderful. He's wonderful. We grew up together. Yeah. I go to him a lot for advice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. When, I, when my mother and I worked things out, I have, uh, it was nine of us, well, more than nine, however many, and I'm the oldest. And once we worked things out, she would call me up, hey, you need to talk to your brother mm -hmm. or your sister. That's what I tell so, him about his sister. Yeah. <laughs> call your sister, please. <laughs> yeah. How old is she? 14. That's, a, oh, so she's still young. Yeah. Um, you said that after a breakup, you realized you didn't know what love was. Mm -hmm. So do you know what love is now? Yes. And what is love? It's unconditional. It's kind. Bears all things. Believes all things. Yeah. Good. And, and when you say <laughs> unconditional, meaning that, explain that part for me. There are no conditions, no expectations, you know. Yeah. It can't always be my way. It's selfless. And it's better that way. <laughs> you know, um, um, it's amazing what you have gone through. And you're still surviving it. Uh, uh, you know, reading your book and all that, it's just amazing. And then knowing that um, you, you came out as a conservative. Yes. What were you thinking? Oh, I got to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Your mother and father, did they have parents? Yes. Did, were you not close to any of them? Yeah, I was very close to my mother's parents. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. And so they were able to kind of look out. They raised home. me a lot. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you were a Democrat, a liberal. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I never voted. The first time I voted was for Obama. Really? Yes. Your first mistake. Yes. That's and I, I, to be honest with you, you know, I, I, I don't care if it's politically correct, but I got blacked into it. Yes. You know, he was the first black man to run for presidency. And I thought, this is going to be wonderful. <laughs> He's going to unite us in yeah. such a profound way. Right. And he did the exact opposite. Totally. Not only that, he was a socialist. Yes. And that's when I was like, wait yeah. a minute, hold up. <laughs> this isn't, no, no. Were you like really disappointed? This was the first time you voted for him. Were you disappointed that he did not do what you thought he was going to do? Yes. Yeah. 
disappointed, angry. Yeah. I mean, this is the time when I could be angry. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was angry. <laughs> so you decided, well, I'm, you're going to both admit Romney the second time around. That's right. And so you, I read that you were, oh, you did a tweet. I, t I tweeted. I tweeted, vote for Romney, the only hope for our future. I woke up the next day and my whole life had changed. I totally remember that tweet. My whole life had All changed. All hell broke loose that, yes. that day. Yes. And I thought, okay. I mean, every news outlet wanted me. And I said, no, because I don't want anyone to think I did this for press. Right. So I did one exclusive with Pierce Morgan. Yes. And uh, that was it. And then everyone wanted my opinion. And I thought, oh, okay, well, psh, I'm a capitalist. Let me make money while I give it. That's right. So I met right with on. Roger Ailes, who was a mentor to me. Again, right a on. man that never did anything. I know. Another that's alleged. I, you know, I'm not discounting anyone else's, right. but he was a mentor to me. Yes. And he brought me in. That's amazing. Yeah. And that is my blow. I'm glad to hear that. I thought he was a really good man. Yes. I really did. So smart. smart. Yeah, a smart man. Oh, so smart. So, uh, so you tweet this thing out, and you weren't thinking, well, this might have an effect on my life here. No. It, it, nothing occurred to you. No. <laughs> I just thought this is what I believe, and I'm gonna say it. Yeah. And then the next morning, all hell broke loose. All hell. Matter of fact, we talked about it on my radio show. Like, oh, she's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, come from the South Bronx. <laughs> trouble doesn't scare me. <laughs> I can tell. And so all hell broke loose. And then you start. What start? What happened after all that? People turned on you. Your friends turned. Or what? Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm a lot of people turned. They like, what's wrong with you? How can mm -hmm. you be a Republican? And mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then I started thinking about it. Yeah. You know, and that's why I wrote my book. Because I started thinking about the, the code of the streets. You know, <laughs> those are very conservative principles. Yes. You know. Yeah. Did family members turn on you too? Yes. Uh, how about Hollywood? Did Hollywood turn on you? Yes. They turn on you. Oh yeah, I've been blacklisted. And how do you know that for sure? I've had agencies actually say they won't represent me because they I do not stand for their beliefs. They told you that? Yes. <laughs> and what was your response to them? You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace. Yeah. Were those uh, scary times for you? No, because I really, I know what God wants for me, no man can keep from me. Yeah. That's I good. just have to be still and know that he is God. Yes, that's right. And you've been called, as I have, but you've been called Uncle Tom, sell out. I mean, some of the worst names that you can yeah. even call someone. <laughs> and it just rolls off your back. Yeah. Have yeah. you been threatened? Yes. Are you afraid for your life? No. No. What type, give me a couple examples of the type of threats you've gotten. You know, if, if I could, I would, you know, if oh. I saw you, I would shoot you or, yeah. you know, if I could, I would, I mean, there's been of very course. explicit, you know. I was sitting in the airport waiting to get on another flight. I landed in uh, Houston, Texas, and I was waiting for the next flight back to L.A. And some white guy came over and said, hey, I really like your work. I see you all the time. And a black guy heard him and looked around and saw it was me. All hell broke loose in the airport. <gasps> really? and, they, and so the, they, uh, the flight people said, hey, you got to get on the plane. So they put me on the plane right away. Wow. And so, and, but I've gone through all that stuff. Wow. But I don't care at all. I love what's right. I love the truth with all my heart, soul, and might. I'm blessed to be an American. And I know what it's like to be in that fallen state because I was a liberal Democrat and I thought blacks were sellouts when they became conservatives or Republicans. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know why they do it, so mm -hmm. I, it doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to cow down to that. No, I won't cow down to it. And if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, right? That's right, absolutely. So do you feel brave? Yes. You feel brave? I do. And if you are a brave, tough woman, right? Mm -hmm. When you meet a man, he gonna have to be tougher than you. That's right. Oh. <laughs> and do you test them to, to see if they're tough before you really get involved? Yeah, I can tell. 
I can, can tell who's got grit. Yeah, I'm and, from the Bronx, man. Yeah. And so <laughs> for all the beta males, yeah. what is it that you can look at a guy and know there's a beta male, he's not an actor. What is it about him that tells you that? But there are some beta males that are also alpha because in order for you to have your beta, you have to be strong enough to allow that. There's nothing wrong with that. You could be a beta and an alpha? I believe that. How? Well, if you've got pain inside, right. and you're, you're man enough to show it, that takes courage. But women don't like men who show their pain. Who said? Because they want a strong man. They see that as a weakness. I'm not saying, you know, go around crying. Oh, good. And wearing high heels and makeup <laughs> and stuff, but I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Oops. Oh, gosh. I'm just talking about for my personal right. companionship yeah, as right. my you mate. Don't want to have on yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what does it mean to have faith? Believing in what's not seen. I can't see it, but I believe it. Yeah. And how does one know when they believe before they can see it? How do you know when it's happening in your life? Uh, it fills you. Your, the Holy Spirit fills you yeah. with this joy and you are fearless. Yeah. You are truly fearless. And do you, do you feel that or is it just happening and you are amazed how you have the courage to deal with things and to overcome them without having to think about it? Worry yes, about it. That's you it. just like you look back and think, "Wow, I went through that. That yeah. was amazing." And you remember that God got you through all those things. Yes. And that's the thing you have to remind the devil when he tries to tell you you can't. It's not going to happen. Yeah. This is how it's going to be for us. Wait a minute. God pulled me through all that. Why would he stop now? That's one thing I really like about being a son of God mm -hmm. is that I, without a doubt. I know that he's controlling my life. And so I don't even attempt to take, uh, mm -mm. Uh, take uh, the credit for it. Yeah. Because I know it's from him because I'm so amazed, Stacy, the life that I have, I could not have even imagined. I grew up on a plantation. I know. In Alabama. I know. Under the Jim Crow laws, right? Right. And so you don't have, and I'm not educated, you know, because you ever pick cotton? No. I got to take you to Alabama. Okay. So you can pick some cotton. Okay. But it's like, it's just, God bless me. He gave me common sense and he just got in my life. And it's absolutely amazing. Yes. And I want people to know that, that anyone that wants to overcome, they can. They can. You yeah. don't have to be a victim. You are yeah. not a victim. That's right. That's a choice. That's right. What do you think about Kanye West and what, you know, he came out and said, you know, blacks must have been enslaved 400 years physically and mentally, and he doesn't want them to go through that. Right. Another 400 years, and he loved the Great White Hope. You know who the Great White Hope is, right? Trump. There you go. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about what he said <laughs> and what's happening with him right now? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, if, if he's getting people to wake up and listen, yeah. wonderful. God yeah, bless really him. He really is. And that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Maxine Waters, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. With the low IQ. Yeah. She said that Kanye West need to be quiet. She's crooked. I know. She said that he is, he doesn't realize that he is impacting the black community and especially young blacks. And I'm thinking that's a nightmare for her. It is. Because she does not want blacks to wake up. No. And see what's going on. Because then they'd see she's crooked. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing though that they were, they would vote for this woman. She's been there over 40 years. It's too long. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Enough already, man. Too long in a marriage. <laughs> and how do you feel about the great white hope? I love him. Me too. And why I do you love him? I think he's a fantastic him? president. Yeah. He means what he says and he says what he means. I know. Isn't that something? And no one can control him yeah. or buy him. Now that's an Afro male. That's right. All the way, capital that's right. Afro. And he had the relationships with all the powers around the world before he became president. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he first announced that he was running, mm -hmm. and the things that he said, and he said it with such courage, no fear, I'm going to put a big, beautiful wall around the borders. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring jobs back. I'm going to do this. I said then, that's going to be our next president. Yeah, so did I. It was so, yeah, it was so refreshing coming yeah. from the eight years of hell right. with Barack Obama. And I realized, you know what? God is still with us that's right. in this country. 
And so far, he's been taking names and Amen. kicking butts. Amen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'm loving seeing the liberals. They're just, they hate him. and they're like, <laughs> Their heads are spinning off. Yeah. Their heads are spinning around and around. They don't know what to do, and I love it. It's so much fun seeing that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and they underestimate him, which is exactly what he wants them to do. He and flushed it, out the rats. Yeah. And then, yeah, he let them hang themselves. And I knew that's what he would do. They play checkers, he plays chess. And it's wonderful. I sit back and I just watch him. And it's and fantastic. Observe. Isn't it fun? Yeah, it's mind blowing. <laughs> it's just so mind blowing. You know, I read a portion of his book. He was close to his father. Mm -hmm. He loved his mother. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have a good relationship with your parents, who are for the most part setting a good example for you, it kind of set the foundation for your life. Yeah, and I've also I also take my opinion of him a lot from his children. Yes. And how they're even though they're from different mothers, right. they are united. That's right. They're all his children, yeah. and they're always together, and they're so good. Yeah. You know, and I just think that that says a lot about him. You can tell that they love him. Too. Yes. It's so important to have a good father and mother when you're growing up. It's like the number one thing yes, that we need. Yes, it is. One, two things, real fast. Okay. Um, so Kanye West, I want to go back to him. Yeah. So six years earlier, you had done the same thing that Kanye is doing today. Yes. And so when that, when you woke up and you heard about what he had gone through, what he was had done and mm -hmm. going through, what was your first thought about? Good for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I know him, so I thought good for him. Oh, so you met him and you know him? Yes. Uh, were you surprised at what he did when he talked about how much he loved the president? and? No, and, because he had taken those photos with him before, right. but then backpedaled from them, you know, about yeah. mental illness or whatever. But now I feel like he's feeling like, you know what? This is what I believe, and I have a right to believe this. <laughs> That's right. You know? It's amazing how people try to tell you how to think and... You have to stay on this plantation? No. If not, we that plantation come mentality, it's a psychological prison. Yes, it sure is. And that's the hardest prison to break. It, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's going to take God to It'd break It'd be that. easier to break out of Rikers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you at one time said that you were going to run for Congress. Yes. Right? And then you decided not to. Why did you decide not to? Because I was rooting for you. Divine delay. And what do you mean by that? God said, not now. God showed me, he took the curtain back. He let me see behind the curtain and then said, okay, take what you need, not now. Is acting still a passion of yours? We'll see. I'm doing a movie called Roe v. Wade. Well, now it's been changed to 1973. Uh -huh. And I'm playing Dr. Mildred Jefferson. Really? Do you know who she was? Yes, I do. Yes. That's amazing. I know, I'm so excited. It's the role of a lifetime. And when will it be out? Uh, it out? The fall. This fall? Yes. I am looking forward to that. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. My final question. Yes. Did you have fun? I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Thank you so much Thank for coming. Thank you for having We're me, We're going to have you back. Okay. Maybe some days you could sit in for me on my radio show. I would love that. You would love that? Yes. Well, remember that, James. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.